All right, so in this video, we're going to be going over area between curves. All right, so what am I talking about here and how do we find that? All right, so say we have your function uh, f of x, whatever that is. Okay, it could be that squiggle, whatever. All right, how would you find the area under the curve here? All right, well, hopefully, you know that you would take an integral, right? You would say, all right, well, if I'm trying to find the area under the curve from a to b, then I'm going to say the integral from a to b of f of x, right? Well, what if I add another function, g of x, and I ask you to find the area between f of x and g of x on that closed interval a to b? What are you going to do? Well, here it's basically the same exact thing as regular like kindergarten subtraction okay but it's on a calculus scale okay all we have to do all right is we take the area the whole area of f of x right and okay, we, we take all that area we subtract the area of under g of x okay if we subtract that then we get our desired area, right? We want the area between f of x and g of x, which is going to be this area right here, okay? So we take the whole part, which is what's in black, right? We subtract what's in blue, and we get what's in green, okay? That's really all there is to it, okay? And what that translates out to, right? Like the whole thing, what was in black, was the integral of f of x, all right? And we're going to subtract, well, of course we have a dx here. We subtract the area under the, the curve uh, from a to b of g of x. Okay, that's literally it. All right, that's what we're talking about when we're talking about area between curves. Okay, so that's the integral from a to b of f of x minus g of x dx. Okay, you take your top function, you subtract your bottom function, and you get your area between the curves. All right, that's all there is to it. So let's do an example. All right, so we have our uh, first problem up on the board. Find the area bounded by y equals e to the x and y equals x, x equals zero, and x equals one, all right? So I have at least a graph of y equals e to the x and y equals x on the board. And of course we have x equals one, so we can put that, let's say right here, all right? That'll be x equals 1. All right, great. So we're trying to find this area right here. Okay, that's the area bounded between e to the x, y equals x, 0 and 1. Okay, how are we going to find that area, right? Well, if we take that whole area under the curve, which is y equals e to the x, or the, sorry, the integral of e to the x, and we subtract the area of this little triangle right here, um, which is air under y equals x, we're gonna get this area, okay? So all we do here, we take the integral from zero to one because those are our bounds, zero to one, and we're going to take e to the x, which is our top function, minus our bottom function of x. We have our dx on the end, and we integrate, we find our answer, all right? Let's just integrate quick. We get e to the x minus x squared over two evaluated from zero to one, all right? And we just plug the whole thing in. E to, oh, we, sorry, we evaluate the whole thing. So we get e to the first uh, minus 1 over 2 uh, minus e to the 0 minus 0 over 2. All right. Make sure you evaluate with that 0. Sometimes I like to, you know, be a little quick and forget about the 0 because it's not going to do anything. But we have an e to the x here. And e to the 0 is 1. So we're going to get e minus 1 half minus well, this is going to be a zero here, but this will be a one. So we get E minus three halves. Okay. So that's a little quick example for you of what I'm talking about. All right. So we have another problem up on the board here. And we have uh, find the area enclosed by parabolas y equals x squared and y equals 2x minus x squared. Now, I didn't draw the graph already because I want to make something clear to you guys. And, and that's that. When I'm drawing this, this graph, okay, 
I'm not some genius person who knows, well, I guess you don't really need to be a genius, but I don't at least know what 2x minus x squared is going to look like, okay? You don't, and you don't need to, okay? But you need to have an idea of what it'll look like, okay? So I'm not sure exactly what this 2x is doing, okay? But I know that since I have a minus x squared, that problem is going to get flipped, okay? So I'm going to have something that looks like what we have. We already know what our y equals x squared looks like. In our 2x minus x squared, that's going to be our parabola, but flipped, okay? And then whatever that 2x does to the parabola, it'll probably shift it over or something like that, okay? So now we're doing the same exact thing, right? We have our top function minus our bottom function, okay? We get it, but we need to find our bounds. We need to find those intersection points so we know our bounds, all right? So let's find our intersection points. Well, we need to set x squared equal to 2x minus x squared, right? All right, we just set these equations equal to each other and let's find out what we're going to get, all right? So we add x squared to both sides, we subtract 2x, we get 2x squared minus 2x equals zero. We take a 2x out and oops, that's gonna be an x minus one. All right, and that gives us x equals zero and x equals one. So those are my intersection points, all right? And like I said, I was kind of just guessing what 2x minus x squared was gonna look like because I at least knew that it was going to be a flipped parabola. So now that I know my, my bounds, okay, my intersection points, I can redraw this graph, okay? So I can redraw this graph. We know our y equals x squared looks like this, but we know our 2x minus x squared is gonna look something like this, all right? And now we're finding this area. So, what is going to be our area here, okay? Well, we're gonna take the integral of the top function, right? What's the top function here? What's the top function over this interval? Well, it's gonna be 2x minus x squared. That's what's on top, all right? So we get our area is going to be equal to the integral from 0 to 1 of, well, it's going to be 2x minus x squared. And we're going to subtract our bottom function, our bottom function, just x squared. All right. And that gives us the, oh, we have a dx on the end. Our area is going to be equal to the integral from 0 to 1 of 2x minus 2x squared dx. We get a right here. We get our answer. Um, we're sorry, we integrate, we evaluate, we get our answer. Area is going to be equal to x squared minus two thirds x cubed evaluated from zero to one. All right. And now we just stick in, uh, we do our evaluation, we get our answer. So when we evaluate this integral, we're going to get one minus two thirds, which is going to equal one third. All right. And that's our area for this, all right? That's what the area under the curve is. So really, this is not a, a super hard problem, right? This is kind of like the basic stuff of what, you, what you're gonna end up getting, all right? All right, so here's another thing. What if I asked you to find the area under the, or enclosed by these two curves, f of x and g of x? What would you do, all right? Well, here, you just got to understand that your top function is switching to become your bottom function, okay, at certain points. So you have to integrate this separately to where, okay, so for instance, if we were just asking about this first area here, okay, or, or we'll call this area one. Well, area one is going to be the integral from A to B of f of x minus g of x dx, okay? We know that, right? That's what we've been working on. But what about area two? Well, in that case, g of x becomes our top function. So a two is gonna be equal to the integral from b to c of, now this is g of x on top, so g of x minus f of x dx. Okay? And then what about area three? Well, now f of x is back on top and our area is just going to be the same as with a1, but from different bounds. Those are going to be from C to D of 
f of x minus g of x dx. All right, so then the final area, okay, so the whole area of the whole thing is just everything added up, right? So we have our area is going to be equal, so we can label that area total is equal to the integral from a to b of f of x minus g of x dx uh, plus the area from b to c of g of x minus f of x dx plus the integral from c to d of f of x minus g of x dx. All right, that's your whole area. So just know that when your top function switches and becomes your bottom function, you need to separate the integrals. Okay, that's basically what I'm trying to get at here. All right, so the, the last example that I want to show you is the going to be when your your lines don't have a top function and a bottom function with respect to x, okay? If I want to find the area here, notice that I have x equals g of y and x equals f of y, right? These are in terms of y, not in terms of x, and so are my bounds, okay? So what becomes my top function and what becomes my bottom function here? Well, now instead of talking about distance with respect to the x-axis, we're going to talk about distance with respect to the y-axis, okay? So instead of talking about that distance, that vertical distance, we're talking about horizontal distance. So for instance, this is what I'm talking about. We're talking about that horizontal distance, the distance from our function to the y-axis. And if you look at it that way, our graph that is going to be our top function is going to be f of y. So what we're going to do here, we just do the integral from c to d of our top function, which is going to be f of y minus our bottom function, which is g of y, all right? And then we have our dy on the end, all right? And that's how you're going to evaluate that integral. So I'm gonna write a step-by-step -step process and then we'll be done. Here's a step-by-step -step process of how to do your uh, area between curves, okay? So the first step, we're going to draw that graph out and we're going to locate what area we're trying to find. Okay, that's going to give us a great idea of what's our top function, what's our bottom function, and what bounds, you know, um, all that good stuff. So the second step, find any intersection points. Why do you want to find the intersection points? All right, well, first off, like in that parabola example where you did the, the, the regular parabola and the upside down parabola, we need to define those intersection points to find our bounds. You also want to find intersection points because what if your graph intersects the, the other graph and you end up having your, your top function become your bottom function? Well, then you need to separate that integral into to two of them with uh, your f of x, your g of x switch, something like that, all right? The third thing, you wanna set up your equation with the right variable. So whether you're with respect to x or whether you're with respect to y, make sure your bounds are right, all that good stuff. And the fourth thing, integrate and evaluate. All right, get that problem done and move on to the next. All right, so that does it for this video. I hope this cleared everything up for you guys uh, surrounding area between curves. And I'll see you guys in the next video.